Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to show you how to display the RSSI which stands for Received Signal Strength Indication on Betaflight on-screen display using the Jumper T16 remote controller. Monitoring this value is important since it's going to indicate whether your radio signal is getting low and it might prevent you from losing or crashing your quadcopter. Now by the way, since the Jumper T16 remote controller is using the Jumper TX firmware which was forked from OpenTX, this short tutorial is going to be applicable to pretty much every FRSky remote controller. In this tutorial, I'm going to use two FRSky compatible receivers. The first one is the FRSky RFSR receiver, which is using the D16 protocol. And the second one is the Crazy B F4 flight controller, which has a built-in SPI RX receiver. As you can see, the FRSky RFSR receiver is already bound and we can monitor the RSSI over here. The first thing you need to do is to head over to the model menu and you need to check that you can see the RSSI value under sensor. If it doesn't appear, you have to scroll all the way down to discover new sensors and it will discover the RSSI, of course, if the receiver that you are using supports RSSI. Then you have to go to the input section, configure a new input. I named it RSSI and I recommend not using capital letters. The source should be RSSI and you should pay attention that there are a couple of options. So it's not RSSI minus or plus. The one you need to set it to is RSSI. The scale needs to be set to 100 dB and it shouldn't touch any of the other values. Then head over to the mixer section and you can use any free auxiliary channel that you have. I'm going to name it RSSI as well. And the source needs to be the RSSI that we set previously under the inputs. That's why I recommend not using capital letters because then you might be confused with the other RSSI values. So now it's set to the input that we previously configured. The weight needs to be set to 200% and the offset needs to be set to minus 100%. Now we can simply go back. And now, by the way, under channel seven, you can see the RSSI value. The next thing you need to do is to head over to Betaflight, connect to your flight controller, select the receiver tab, and then under RSSI channel, select the auxiliary channel that you previously configured under the mixer. I set it to channel seven, which is auxiliary three, then head over to the OSD tab, and then select the RSSI value and place it on your screen. In case you're having issues getting the correct RSSI value, make sure that RSI ADC switch is turned off under configuration. If you're still having issues getting the correct RSSI values, I recommend to head over to the CLI, type get RSSI, and make sure that except the RSSI channel, all the other values are set to these values, because for example, if the RSSI scale is not going to be set to 100, you're not going to get the correct RSSI value. Getting the RSSI value using an SPI RX receiver is a little bit different. So as you can see, under telemetry, the RSSI value is not shown over here, so you can't use the RSSI value under input. So what you need to do is to hit discover new sensors. And as you can see, now the RSSI is discovered under telemetry channel number 14. So in order to use this value, you need to configure a new input. I'm going to name it again RSSI. And the source needs to be set to RSSI on telemetry channel number 14. So you have to scroll down, you're going to pass RSSI, RSSI plus and minus, so you have to scroll pretty much all the way down until you're going to reach RSSI. The scale needs to be set to 100 and then head over to the mixer and just like before, configure a new auxiliary channel that is using the source that we previously configured, the weight needs to be set to 200% and the offset needs to be set to minus 100%. Then the configuration process is identical on Betaflight like I've previously showed you. And as you can see, the RSSI is shown on the FPV feed. If you want to make sure that everything is working fine, you can see that when I'm moving the quadcopter, the RSSI value changes and you can also see the RSSI value under channel seven. So I hope you enjoyed this short tutorial and you found it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. 
See you in my next videos and goodbye.